Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're looking at these, which are the Night Fox Corsac Night Vision Binoculars. So this company reached out to me and they said, hey, you wanna check these out? I don't own anything that offers me any kind of night vision, so I thought, yeah, let's check them out. Um, very simple operation. Um, the way it works is I'm actually able to roll in footage of what I'm seeing at night that's recorded on the binoculars and then you know put it into this video. So stay tuned because I'll show you that in a minute. But let me give you some of the details on the actual binoculars first. Here's a quick look at the box for anybody interested. Night Fox Corsac Digital Night Vision Binocular. A little bit of information on the back of how to set it up. Here's a look at the case that you actually get with the binoculars. Nicely made, nothing too fancy, um, but it'll keep the uh, binoculars safe. Let me unzip it to show you what the inside looks like. So open it up, you got a little storage and a couple things that you can slide in here and then the binoculars are down to that lower section. All right, so quick look here. Let me show you the, uh, there's the strap, which is actually pretty nice. It's got neoprene in it. Got a little bit of texture there on the back. Simple enough to attach it to the two sides. Uh, you can see you've got kind of this thing that you're gonna rest your uh, rest your face in, and then you're gonna look into a screen as opposed to into like normal set of binoculars. You have two holes and then two holes, right? Um, so this is looking into a screen instead. That's what the uh, the other end looks like. All right, let me go through the features here. So you got a power button, obviously, to turn the uh, the uh, night vision binoculars on. You do have a plus button that's gonna zoom in. Um, as you're actually looking into them. Then you have this up and down arrow that's gonna increase um, the amount of light that it's basically taking in so that you can see better at night. If it's still a little bit a little bit like maybe a moonlight or something like that, you wanna bring it down. If it's pitch black, maybe you wanna bring that up. And then you've got your camera button so you can take video, still images, and then obviously you've got the playback option to see what you're actually looking at. As far as accessories and things, you got your manual, you also have just kind of a little advertisement. And then you have, this is a USB, is it a micro USB? Let me double check, yeah. It's a, it's a micro USB for taking the um, content off of your binoculars and putting it onto your computer if you wanna do that. What I wanna do now is take you through the basic setup instructions. So first thing you're gonna do is press the power button to turn it on, you hold it for, it says uh, three seconds and that'll turn it on. And then you've got this picture here where you can see you've got your, um, you've got a manual focus button or a knob, which is right there, which is, you know, like your standard binoculars. When you're looking out, you wanna to adjust to make sure that you're seeing things clearly, it's not blurry, simple enough. Then you've got a lens cap you're gonna remove, and then over here, number three, they call this the infrared bulb. This is where the Corsax infrared LED is located. The LED will softly glow red on higher IR settings. So that's just kind of a basics of you know some of the different features and let me actually show you that on the binoculars now all right so there's your cap you're going to take this off there's your knob to adjust it so that you have a, have a, um, a clear uh, picture and then over here is they're saying that's your infrared bulb right so again it's very basic like once you figure out if you know how to use basic binoculars it's similar other than you got some computer functions but you're going to look through it you're going to adjust the knob so it looks clear and then if you want to zoom in, press the zoom in button. If you want more, um, basically better, uh, more brightness, I should say, uh, at night when you're using it in the dark, you can press up or press down on those two features. And then you can scroll through the different options, still images, video, record, stop recording, playback, things like that. All right, so we've got the micro USB for getting the data off there. And then you've got your little spot that does come with a, uh, a memory card in there already. And then on the bottom, you can mount it to a tripod. And then down on the bottom is where you're gonna put your batteries. It takes six AAA, or sorry, six AA batteries. So it's quite a few batteries. You wanna make sure you have those so you're not disappointed when you go out at night and you're like, oh, I forgot the batteries. So um, I thought it was gonna have a built-in battery pack that you charged, but it does not. So heads up on that. All right, so with that said, we're gonna let the night fall and we'll get some footage. I have used these already at night just to test them out. Um, it's pretty cool, but we'll get some footage now and I'll do some voiceover to just kind of talk through what the experience is like and then we'll offer you some final thoughts. I am up in my studio now and we're gonna roll in footage of the night vision goggles and I'll just give you the play-by-play -play now. So starting off, um, you can see the kids' play set out in the yard. So again, everything's pitch black now. So the fact that you can see any of this is quite impressive. Uh, I'm looking off into the woods. If you see some light, um, there's birch trees out there, and then there's also 
uh, the neighbors like through the woods, you can see some of the light coming back. So, but it, imagine that's pitch black, and then now you can see the tire swing. I mean, you can see quite well out to probably, I would say, 175 feet um, on the current setting. So here's another shot. Uh, up close, you can definitely see better. Now you can see when you have trees and things close to you, it's going to reflect light back to you. Um, I don't know how the, what, how all the technology works. I just know that you get more kind of a, of a brightness when there's trees close by. So this is me kind of messing with it. And then I'm going to zoom in here in a minute as you see this happen. What I can tell you is that the actual footage you're looking at now um, that I got off the camera, it's very wobbly, obviously, because um, it's not on a tripod. I'm just holding it. But the actual footage that you're looking at is better than what I see when I'm looking into the binoculars. You can still see okay, um, but I think you'll see later on it's definitely a bit grainy depending on what you're looking at. Um, that's me zoomed way back out again to uh, just kind of get the big picture. So I'm looking over a stone wall, some trees up close, then I'm looking off into the woods. So that's the second shot. I just pulled my car over, shut the lights off on a dirt road, and started looking off into the, uh, into the woods. Here's another shot coming up. This next one is, um, I think this is looking out. Let's, I think I'll see in a second here. Yeah, no, that's just another spot looking off into the woods. I have a couple of shots looking off, um, basically into the woods beyond a pond. So this is with, you know, basically further into the woods. Here's me zooming in. Um, you can see as you do that, it definitely gets grainier, <clears throat> excuse me, off in the distance. I'm refocusing here, but that's a, that's a shot looking, you know, deeper into some thick woods. Obviously, if there was an animal there, like a deer standing there, you could see it clearly. Okay, here's me looking, um, onto a pond. I've got a big tree right next to me, so it does, you're going to see the light reflect back, or, or, or bright light, or a lot of um, kind of white color coming back as I turn here. Yeah, you can see that right, right there, because that tree is up close. So you're looking at probably uh, 250 feet across the pond, and you can see out there. To see the other, uh, other side really clearly, even zoomed in like I am, you can see it gets quite grainy. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's way zoomed in. You can see how grainy it is. It's, even when you focus it, it's still pretty grainy. You can make out a general form of something, I think, out there in the woods, but you're not going to look at that and go like, oh yeah, I can totally see very clearly if there was three people or two deer or something like that out in the woods. So um, yeah, that graininess is, that's a thing when it, when it's, you're looking at it at a distance. Definitely better when you're up close here. Um what I've done with this shot is that I'm in the spot right where that tree there, where that tree is, and then I'm going to step beyond that tree, and as I'm walking up here, you're going to see a shot with me actually looking, same pond, exact same uh, location, but without that tree right next to me so that I don't have that bright reflection coming back. So a little bit better like that shot right there. Um, when you stop moving, it's, I think, a little bit clearer. It kind of locks in, it seems like. But again... Um, you know, bottom line, you can see. You can definitely see at night. It is pitch black in these woods. Here's another shot I just pulled off um, on the side of the road and looked off kind of into a little swampy area. The other side of the swamp where the hill starts to rise there is probably about 110 feet or so. So not super far. Pretty crisp, you know, right there. That's all frozen right there in front of me. But pretty, pretty decent image, I would say, um, at that point. So... Um, the next shot you're going to see, we're going to keep looking over this pond. The next shot you're going to see is actually looking out into the Great Bay in the seacoast of New Hampshire. Um, I zoom in here again, kind of grainy. But this next shot, shot as we look out into the Great Bay, it's got no trees. It's just a pretty, it's, a, it's an inlet, but it's leading out to the Great Bay, which is quite large. So as we look at that in a minute, you'll see the difference it is having trees versus no trees. So here's trees, swamp, some brush, things like that. And then you'll see right in this next shot, right about now, switching over to, so you can see the darkness of the trees on the edge. There's just a lot of ice and stuff. There's the darkness of those trees over on that edge. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, when you're, if someone was out or there was an animal out walking across the ice or in the water, something like that, it would be hard to see. Um, when you have a big open space like this, it just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't translate, I guess, as well. And then this last shot here you're going to see is going to be looking out to a big open field that I've spotted deer in before. I've seen their eyes shining back at me. So a big open field, It's you can tell probably that it's a flat area. You probably couldn't tell unless you you know knew it that it's it's a field as opposed to like ice you know out in the distance there. A little bit swampy, but definitely not definitely not water out there. It's land. So when you look out there, you're kind of like 
can't see a whole lot. So um, you can see where the trees are. Um, when there's a lot of brush and stuff like that, it seems to do better as far as what the actual uh, image looks like for the, uh, for the binoculars. All right, guys, back in the studio here. I'm going to wrap up talking to you about these night vision goggles. Um, I haven't checked the price on purpose. Here's what I tell you. Um, I'm going to check the price in a minute, but what I would pay for this is probably 125 and up a little bit. Um, I wouldn't pay 300 bucks for them. I wouldn't pay 200 bucks for them. Um, my sense is that, you know, there's maybe like stuff you're going to buy that's going to break in a week and then intro level and then like mid level as far as night vision. This is in between those two. They're not obviously night vision goggles like the Navy SEALs or something like that. But if you want to get some experience in using an item that you can see at night with, I would say put it in between kind of beginning and maybe in the medium, medium area or intermediate area. Um, like you saw, uh, the actual footage is better than what you're seeing in the screen. Um, cause you know, you're getting the footage, you're recording it, you're looking at it on, a, on a nice laptop or a nice phone or whatever, as opposed to the screen that they have built into the, um, into the, into the, uh, binoculars there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're cool. It's a cool product because yeah, now you can get out into the woods and see stuff. If you were camping at night and you heard something out in the distance, that would be cool to be able to like, oh, I heard something. Let me check it out with my night vision binoculars. That could be a cool experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're a worthwhile investment if you want to get some experience with night vision. And <clears throat> it's not something that you want to walk with, right? They're not goggles that you can walk with. You got to kind of set up, look around, move, set up, look around. Um, when you see how it is pitch black and then you put them on in front of your eyes and you're like, I can literally see, you know, the end of the street, end of the woods, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So it's just the graininess as you zoom in that I'm like, that makes me a little bit like a little bit less excited. So anyhow, that said, let me check the price right now so I can see how my opinion connects to what they're actually charging. Just looked it up. 150. You're looking at 149 for these, um, for these night vision binoculars that you can record. Now I do think the recording feature is pretty slick, especially if you're like looking at something and then you want to go show it to somebody else who's not there. Game over. If you don't have a way to record it, it's in 1080 which is a good quality. I mean, 4K obviously better and things like that, but um, 1080 still works. It gives you a nice image. So yeah, I think 150, very reasonable for what you're, what you're uh, going to get. I wouldn't go way above that for this, but they do have a bunch of other options. So check out their, uh, check out their uh, website. And I've got links down below if you want to learn more about what they have to offer. Now I'm no night vision expert. So if you have experience with night vision goggles or binoculars, monoculars, whatever it is, Share in the comments. Let's hear your thoughts and your experience. And let's hear your thoughts on this product as well. Let's get that conversation started now. All right, guys. Thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.